following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and welcome to yet another episode of Gen XYZ where we talk about issues pertaining to the youth and contemporary issues that have to do with the current context in general. Now cancer is an issue that has affected of course all of humanity but mostly the elderly generation so of course youth have not focused much on it but we forget sometimes that cancer does not know age does not know race and cancer is something that will affect of course anyone I'm pretty sure someone in your family might have had some scare a cancer scare as we call it and cancer has become very prevalent but we never really focus on exactly how to deal with cancer how detection works and how to handle relatives you know that have been affected with cancer so to speak to this to speak about this today we have an oncologist with us let's go and meet the oncologist now Right here we are and we're about to meet with the oncologist that we were speaking about and he is Dr. Sharma Gunasilaka who is a consultant oncologist and also the head of department of radiation and oncology. Hello doctor, very nice to meet you. Thank Hi. you very much for taking the You're time welcome. to speak to us today. Doctor, cancer has always been an issue and it has, you know, since the beginning of development almost, it has always affected some population or the other and it's still under underway like we still don't have a perfect cure of course so I just wanted to get a preface into cancer in itself could you please explain to us doctor just a brief introduction into cancer and also the prevalent types of cancer that are there in Sri Lanka yes Sanrazi so uh, cancer is actually a group of disease it's not a single disease and uh, uh, cancer occurs in our body I mean it's actually a, a group of cells which is uh, uh, dividing uncontrollably. So uncontrolled cell division is called a cancer. But uh, you need to remember there can be uncontrolled cell growth which are not cancer also. They are called benign tumors. But the cancerous tumor, there is a difference. Do you like to know the difference? Of course, yeah. doctor, please. So uh, when you look at the cancer cells under the microscope, you see it's very angry looking. It doesn't look like the normal cells. And uh, you know, I mean, cell has a nucleus. So cancer cells actually have a larger nucleus, right? And it has a lot of nuclear material uh, compared to a normal cell. So these cells, unlike benign tumors, the cells in the benign tumors, these cells can invade the surrounding structures. Suppose you have a tumor in the liver. So these tumor cells infiltrate the normal liver cells uh, and destroy the liver. And the other feature is it can creep into the blood vessels or lymphatic vessels and it can go to other parts of the body. For example, it can go to the brain, it can go to the lungs, it can go to bones and it can destroy all these structures. That is how a cancer can end up a human life. So uh, cancer is like that. I see doctor and I'd like to just harp on exactly uh, now that we know a little bit about what cancer is mm. I'd also like to know now in Sri Lanka of course in a global con context it might be different but specifically in Sri Lanka what are the most prevalent types of cancer that occur? Yeah. The number one cancer in Sri Lanka is uh, breast cancer irrespective of the sex. So uh, if you get females anyway number one is breast cancer, second is thyroid cancer especially young females. The third one is uh, uh, esophageal cancer and cervical cancer, also a common cancer among females. But if you get, if you get the males, uh, the commonest cancer is head and neck cancer, oral cancer. Um, and the second is lung cancer. And there are many other cancers uh, more commonly seen in Sri Lanka, the prostate cancer uh, and bowel cancer. So there are a lot of cancers like that. Among 200 different cancers, few are common among the population. 
but globally of course uh, i mean uh, the prostate is the number one and now the things are getting changed uh, still it's not seen in sri lanka the number one killer in the world it's becoming cancer earlier it was a heart disease but now the things I are see. changing so cancer has turned into quite lethal even though yeah. earlier we thought that it was already lethal it's becoming mm. even more dangerous more and dangerous. taking more lives now that we know exactly what to you know exactly how many types of cancer are prevalent in sri lanka mm. and how it has affected sri lanka mm. could you please tell us doctor exactly about the youth now how often can we detect cancers in the youth because we usually uh, you know end up like in our mid 40 or 50s when people detect cancer in us mm. uh, but like about the youth how often is it detectable and is it among the youth i have to say cancer incidence is less the reason is the most important risk factor for cancer is age that means uh, the more you grow older the chances of getting a cancer is high now for example if you go to the national cancer control program publication if you get the age versus cancer incidence uh, after 40th decade or 50th decade you see a rapid decrease in cancer incidence so children fortunately the cancer incidence is less uh, the reason behind that may be uh, the reason for cancer is uh, i mean the genetic mutations uh, if i elaborate that uh, the cancer occurs in our body due to changes in the cell genetic material we call it genes so in scientifically we call these changes a mutation so basically genetic mutation cause cancer so more you expose to the environment it can be external environment or internal environment so more you grow older you are exposing more to these environmental factors then there is a more chance for your genetic material get these mutations so that's why elderly people has a higher chance of cancer fortunately the younger people has a lesser chance but they cannot forget they have to be very careful exposing to carcinogens it starting from even before birth that is mother's womb that is fetal level so you have to prevent exposing to carcinogens as much as possible especially during the younger age that is youth has to be more careful for example smoking alcohol and tobacco and various other chemicals you know the food habits bad food habits we have the junk food we are eating so uh, the red meat and uh, more and more people are now getting away from high fiber and uh, high fiber diet that is fresh vegetables and fruits that is a bad thing and uh, due to our busy life uh, most of the population now becoming obese obesity is one major cause for cancer so exercises are very important to prevent uh, cancer basically in other words if you are maintaining a good bmi body mass index that is one uh, way of getting rid of cancers preventing cancer i see doctor and that was very important that you mentioned the exposure to carcinogens mm. and bmi now i'd like to harp on that fact exactly uh, doctor as per your experience what have you seen how vulnerable are youth today to cancers you know considering the context that we're in with an abundance of carcinogens and weight and obesity issues yeah so uh, we can see that uh, especially the tobacco tobacco in various forms smoke less tobacco and uh, cigarettes uh, bd uh, and there are various other forms of tobacco now coming into the society especially among the school children this is going to be a big burden in the future and also at the moment it's a big burden so most of the these tobacco companies are trying to introduce uh, tobacco to younger generation because they know that uh, adults it's very difficult for them to uh make them addicted because they are knowledgeable and they know the effects of tobacco but it's very easy uh, if they make the children addicted to tobacco i mean children doesn't know much about these things and uh, uh, through the friends and to, through very attractive way, ways they can introduce these things to uh, small children especially the school children so uh, after addiction i mean it's very difficult to get rid of them so that is one thing tobacco so i mean uh, the, uh, we should educate the children uh, to uh, refrain from uh, getting uh, tobacco products uh, and the alcohol 
Now earlier there was a saying that uh, small amount of alcohol is okay, but now American Cancer Society is clearly mentioning even a small amount of alcohol is carcinogen. So if you can prevent, I mean if you don't drink alcohol, that is the that is one way of getting rid of uh, cancer. And uh, the food habits. Uh, the thing is uh, now we are in a busy world, right? We uh, even in a, within the family uh, you don't have time to cook at home. So what you do is you try to buy them from food outlets. So these food, I mean, we don't know how they are preparing, and sometimes they use oil again and again. And those oils will change into a carcinogens after boiling several times. And there is a temperature level. After um, going above that temperature, the structure of the oil can change and they become carcinogens. So without knowing, we are eating huge amount of carcinogens. And other thing is uh, we are using a lot of pesticides, fertilizers in our country, um, uh, more than any other country. So those things, ultimately what has happened, they enter into our body they absorb by the gut and they go to the cells and enter into the cell nucleus and they can damage the genetic material. I see and that means like it, there is a possibility of contracting, like not contracting, but rather being exposed to carcinogens since a very young age as well. Now that we know, like sometimes people might think watching, oh no, like there's been such practices being going on like from the beginning of my life it has been so like you know in the youth we can be very hyper concerned regarding mm -hmm. issues such as cancer now if we were to take a step further doctor mm -hmm. could you let us know how to check like what precautions you can do if you suspect you have cancer how do you yeah. check the most important thing is uh, the prevention so we know one third of cancers can be either prevented um, and that is to uh, preventing exposure to the carcinogens and exercise what we have talked about earlier. The second thing is early detection what you are talking now. So early detection of course uh, we can do for the commonest cancer that is the good news. Now breast cancer, so every female after uh, 20 years after 20 years they should start self breast examination that is 7 days after their periods. So if they detect any abnormality in their breast, they should go to a doctor. Because we have seen even 90 year old girls getting breast cancer, that is not common but rare, but that can happen. So other thing is, uh, after 25 years, between 25 and 39, that age group, every 3 years they should come to a doctor and get done a clinical breast examination. And after 40 years, every female, they should get done a mammography. Uh, test an ultrasound test of their breast. So uh, that is every two years. Uh, so like that, the breast cancer, which is the commonest cancer in Sri Lanka, we can detect even before we can palpate it or we can visualize it by naked eye. So very tiny uh, stage. And if we detect that very small breast cancer, we can even cure the cancer and we can remove that uh, cancerous tumor without removing the whole breast and they don't need to undergo chemotherapy, they don't need to undergo radiotherapy, so only surgery it's curable. But if it's become bigger then other treatment has to be done. So cervical cancer, now you know school girls they are getting a vaccine against HPV virus uh, when they are about 12-13 years, so uh, that is a government project. So that vaccine prevent them getting a carcinogenic virus in their um, uh, genital organs. So HPV can cause cervical cancer and many other cancers around the genital tract, even oral cancer. So getting HPV vaccine can prevent it. So most, I mean now in Sri Lanka all the future generation, I mean the younger generation are vaccinated but unfortunately only the females. Uh, then pap smear. All married or sexually active females should get on a pap smear and there is a HPV test also available now for limited amount. So those uh, tests can identify cervical cancer even before it become a cancer at a pre-malignant stage. So at that stage that cancer is totally curable. I see. Right. And oral cancer that is again a commonest cancer, one of the commonest cancer among males. So. Uh, if someone is smoking, uh, if someone is chewing beetle, if someone is taking alcohol, liquor frequently, they should examine their oral cavity at least once a week by themselves in front of a mirror. 
and they should uh, go to a dental surgeon and get done a checkup frequently. Uh, that is to detect pre-malignant conditions in the oral cavity. Uh, and prostate cancer. Uh, prostate cancer is a common cancer among elderly males. So that can be detected by a blood test called PSA, serum PSA. So if that is positive, then we can go for the other test. So likewise, uh, the colonic cancer, we can do a stool local blood. And if that is positive, we can do a colonoscopy and detect it. And then if it is uh, early, it's totally curable. I see, doctor. So there is a way out. A lot of people mm. think a cancer diagnosis is a death sentence, but there's an actual way to prevent before you get that diagnosis itself. There are ways to mm. check and make sure that you are healthy, to make sure that you are cancer free. There's a lot more to discuss, doctor. But before that, let's take a very short break. You're watching Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. We were in conversation with Dr. Sharma Gunathilka and we were talking about exactly how cancer affects youth and how there are precautions to be taken and of course how to deal with cancer in general. Now in the previous section segment doctor we were talking about exactly what we can do, precautions we can take to prevent cancer from be even being an option in our lives. Now to this time I'd like to speak to you about exactly what we can do to combat cancer after it occurs, treatment options, what are the, what are the available treatment options right now doctor there are few major treatment options available at the moment one is uh, cancer surgery it's a, one of the major curable treatment the second curable treatment option is uh, radiotherapy there are various forms of radiotherapy facilities available and the third is uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy and there are new treatment methods like targeted therapies that is also medicine you use and a new technique is they are called immunotherapy and there are hormonal sensitive tumors can be tackled with hormonal treatments. So likewise, there are various methods and there will be more and more new things will be coming in the future also. I see, doctor. And now to get to the elephant in the room, so to speak, there's a very sophisticated machine behind us, doctor. It has taken my attention, of course, from the beginning of this segment. Doctor, could you just give us a little bit of an introduction as to how uh, this uh, treatment method, how, how it functions? Actually, this is called a linear accelerator. Uh, this is the uh, modern type of linear accelerator at the moment uh, globally also. Uh, this is called TrueBeam XTX. Uh, truly speaking, this is the only robotic machine in the country. So, uh, what we do is uh, uh, this machine using electricity it generate very high energy x-rays, right? Those x-rays will be uh, focusing on the target on the patient, right? So on that target, there are various methods that we can uh, uh, treat this patient. There are, I mean, the basic method is three-dimensional conformal radiotherapy. And now there are very advanced methods like intensity modulated radiotherapy. And from this machine, actually using this machine, uh, we give even stereotactic radiotherapy to very small tumors and uh, uh, in a very short period of time and that is actually a curable treatment. Uh, and the uh, beauty of this machine is now daily when we are treating the patient, we need to keep the patient in the same position because we can't treat patient one day in a one position and the second day in the second uh, different position because we are treating a target. The target has to be achieved every day in the same way. So in this machine, we can take a CT scan just before the treatment that is called uh, near real time imaging. So just before treatment, we can take a, a CT image and we can compare that with the initial CT scan we usually do for treatment planning that is called CT simulation. So those two images we overlap and see whether today patient has changed their position. It can be uh, horizontal, vertical or lateral wise or it can be a rotation or pitch or roll. So all these six degree angles can be corrected by using this couch. So that is why we call this is a robotic couch. 
So the accuracy is, I mean, I don't know whether you can believe it, 0 0.1 millimeter accuracy. It's not 0 0.1 centimeter, it's 0 0.1 millimeter accuracy. We can keep the target at the same position. So other thing is the dose rate, radiation dose rate, that means given time, what is the amount of radiation that this machine can give? It's very high. Therefore, unlike in other linear accelerators or any other radiation treatment machines, patient does not need to stay in this couch for a longer period, only two minutes. Every day, within two minutes, we can treat the patient. That is, a, that is one advantage of this machine. Imagine if the patient is having pain due to the cancer, lying on this flat couch may be very difficult, but two minutes is not a big issue compared to a 10-15 uh, minutes. Other thing is we use lot of immobilization devices when we are treating the patient. And uh, um, even uh, in between treatment, there are ways that we can uh, see whether the patient is in the accurate position. Uh, other thing is uh, technology only is not enough. We need to have many other facilities like uh, the human touch. Now in our department, we don't only rely on the technology. So when patient comes every day, uh, a nursing sister has to check the patient. This is not happening in any other place. So they have to check the vital signs. They have to check whether patient is fit enough to go undergo treatment, blood pressure, saturation, pulse, everything they are checking. Even the body weight. Because while on treatment, sometimes patient may not be taking enough nutrition then the body weight goes down. So that can be assessed. So then we have to take some precautions for that. We have to give some more nutrition for the patient. So likewise, the clinical staff actually very important for a radiation department to give a very good treatment for the patient. So that is happening here. Uh, so likewise, uh, we uh, use this machine uh, and the clinical staff uh, to treat the patient. And the other thing is, uh, now, when there are very difficult cases, I mean, uh, the world trend is actually to discuss among the clinician and get a decision for the patient benefit. So what we do is we do multidisciplinary meetings, not only among our clinicians, sometimes with the international clinicians. So we get a good solution for the patient's problem. Doctor, that's a very uh, concise and very knowledgeable description on exactly what this one machine does. I couldn't possibly comprehend exactly how all the other treatment options are also being carried out. Doctor, in relation to exactly how you carry out this process, I just wanted to know, now that this department and this machine and this staff carries this out, how, what, what do you have to say about the rest of the country? Do you have uh, anything to add in regards to treatment options available to combat cancer in Sri Lanka, other treatment options? Yeah, that is a very good question. Unfortunately, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, the facilities are not up to the standard. We have very limited facilities uh, for the cancer patients because this is a luxury, right? I will give you one example. Uh, when I was in South Korea National Hospital, they have shown this particular machine and they told me, you will never get this sort of machine for the next two decades. But fortunately, we got this machine to Sri Lanka, at least in this setup. But this is very expensive. But there are basic linear accelerators. But even that is not adequate for our country. Not even treatment machines, even for the diagnosis or even for screening. The mammography machines in Sri Lanka for breast cancer screening is not adequate. So that is the problem. So there are a lot of things to be improved. I see, doctor, and uh, that's very unfortunate to hear as well, considering how prevalent of a situation that cancer causes and it affects everyone around you. So obviously there should be some sort of importance placed onto fighting cancer itself. Now, doctor, you mentioned uh, uh, medicine in South Korea, you mentioned other nations as well. I believe you might have some experience on exactly how it's been carried out there and I would like to know in comparison to Sri Lanka a little bit of an elaboration how international standards for cancer treatment are. Yeah, uh, international standards actually that was the problem initially. That is the reason why we start this 
to uh, parallel with international uh, treatment facilities. Now we want our patients, our Sri Lankan patients also to undergo uh, the internationally standard treatments. So that is why uh, we got this facility. Uh, so at, when we compare, now we have treated uh, several international patients also. So when they were talking about, when they were comparing our facility with their facilities in their own countries, I mean sometimes what they say is uh, now the human touch and the way we uh, uh, greet them, the way we they approach them, when we compare everything, we are sometimes superior to them. So that is one good thing because uh, the, the Sri Lankan way of uh, approaching things, I mean uh, handling people, the human touch, it's, it's actually beyond technology. So when we add that empathy, human touch in, with, the, with, col with the collaboration with the huge technology, the product is marvelous. So, so we, are, uh, we are planning to get more and more international patients also. So we are getting actually from other countries. Uh, so in the near future, I mean, there will be more patients from overseas, not uh, not only from developing countries, but even from uh, developed countries like uh, states and um, Canada and the UK. We are getting patients from there also, from them, those countries also. So because they trust on our treatment. Definitely, yeah. Mm. There's, I mean, it's a matter of life and death that mm. some uh, some instances, obviously, yeah. cancer sometimes, again, as I mentioned earlier, might be a death sentence to some, might yeah. not be for some others, but it's always a prevalent issue as well. Now, doctor, I wanted to ask you, now that we know exactly what the condition and the climate is for the medical side of treating cancer, as a society, is there a way that we can contribute to the fighting of cancer in Sri Lanka? Yes, definitely. Every citizen has their own responsibilities. First thing is the prevention. They should contribute more towards prevention because that is the best thing. So encourage, encourage the uh, society. There are certain vaccinations that we can get to prevent cancer like hepatitis B, HPV. So we should encourage them to get this. And uh, get, uh, not take, I mean, preventing uh, alcohol, consumption alcohol, consumption tobacco, and having a healthy diet, maintaining the BMI, body mass index, I mean, pre so doing a lot of exercises. So those are our own duties. If you do that, you are, uh, uh, you are actually preventing a cancer means you are doing a huge uh, service to the country by uh, uh, by saving lot of money because each cancer treatment costs a huge amount of money, right? So the second thing is you can help the others. You can, I mean, if someone is smoking, the youth can get together and uh, educate that patient, person and uh, ask him not to smoke and tell them why, what are the reasons, right? And because nowadays what people do is when they get together, they are more towards doing bad things rather than uh, doing good things. So that is important and uh, the cultivation also we can use, use more organic methods so that will help us and consumption of lot of green vegetables, uh, fresh fruits, those are very good. So the youth can encourage these things and even youth can start lot of things towards this. I think lot of people are doing actually uh, now the trend going towards that side is a fortunate thing. Uh, so apart from that. I mean, they can, uh, I mean, help other cancer patients because nowadays people, when they get a cancer, they feel, as you said, it's like a death sentence, but it is not so. There are a lot of patients after treatment, they have got cured and they are living a normal life. So when you move around the society, you might meeting, you might uh, come across a lot of people who has got cancer and now cured. There are many, many patients like that. But they don't like to talk about it, that's, that's the thing. But in Europe, the, most of these patients after getting cured, they come to the society and they, told, they tell that they had this problem and they have got the correct treatment and they are cured now. So then people, this stigma is not no more there among those communities. So what we need to do, now the trend in Sri Lanka also, now it's like that. Now a lot of cancer patients, they come 
forward and they talk about their experience, uh, how they face the cancer treatment, how they beat the cancer. So that is encouraging for the other people. So youth has a responsibility to uh, participate on those events. Definitely. Everybody has a role to play when it comes to combating cancer in yeah. the country, especially the youth when it comes to information and spreading good rather than bad. Yeah. And of course, taking part in healthy practices that will help to take precautions against cancer and maybe eradicate cancer in the future. Who knows? And before we can actually delve into much more that we have to speak about uh, on cancer, let's take a very short break. You're watching Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. We were in conversation with Dr. Sharma Gunathilaka and we were talking about exactly what cancer is and how to combat cancer as a society and as youth in general, how to prevent cancer from occurring in the first place. Now, Doctor, before we left off, we were talking about, you know, breakthroughs in the cancer field and how treatment available options are available. Now, we should probably delve deeper into that because there's been a lot of noise around cancer treatment. You know, when people think chemo, they understand that it has something to do with cancer but it's not like they completely get the entire gist of what is happening could you please just walk us through the treatment options that are available yeah now since you have talked about chemotherapy now chemotherapy is uh, actually using certain chemicals to treat cancer so the basic principle is the cancer cells they are rapidly dividing cells so when you give a cytotoxic that is toxic chemical into the blood system those chemicals will go and absorb mostly by the cancer cells so there are various ways they have experiment those medicines and these chemicals we will go and uh, hit the rapidly dividing cells actually what but the target is the dna so dna uh, when they are dividing DNA will expose to the external environment, so they will be more exposing to the chemicals. And the cell, there are various mechanisms because each chemotherapy type act different way, uh, differently. So, uh, so unfortunately, what will happen? There are many other normal tissues also in the body which are rapidly dividing. For for example, hair follicles, the nails, the skin, the mucous membrane, and the gut epithelium, the bowel epithelium. So what will happen uh, when we treat cancer with these classical conventional chemotherapy drugs, so these cells also sometimes get damaged. So what will happen, the most of these cancer patients having lot of fears uh, about chemotherapy, that is because uh, they are mainly focusing on hair fall. So that is because the hair follicles are rapidly dividing and they will also temporarily knock off by the chemotherapy drug but this is a temporary thing so so when someone comes to me and uh, uh, when I tell about the treatment chemotherapy the first question they will ask is whether my hair, hair uh, will fall so then we have to I mean this is a very psychological thing and uh, we have to be empathically address this issue so we have to uh, I mean uh, uh, strategically tell the patient now hair fall is a temporary thing and you are dealing with a cancer which is life threatening. So you lose hair but it will come back. But if you lose life, will it come back? No. Therefore, for a transient period, temporary, a short period, it's okay to lose hair but protect the life. Right? So likewise, I mean this is one major thing and there are many other things. Now, when a cancer patient undergo chemotherapy, sometimes they get tiredness. We call this fatigue. And this tiredness is uh, somewhat different to whatever tiredness we are talking about day to day. Sometimes uh, they can't even talk to uh, another person. Few words, it's very difficult. Even very difficult to answer a phone call. Even sometimes they might not be able to button their shirt. So that much tiredness they will get and even they can't walk few steps. 
so uh, i mean uh, the so the relatives the family members has to understand this so sometimes uh, uh, the family members are forcing them to eat but they can't eat uh, at least few days after chemotherapy that is because uh, there are some changes happening inside the body so the food types has to be changed during this period so the sometimes i ask the, the patient's family even uh, keep the patient away from the kitchen because the smell of spices can make them nauseating vomitation feeling so uh, but there are certain food that they can eat like ice cream yogurt jelly so you need to tell them educate them what are the things that they can have during this treatment so these are the things that the youth can do actually get some knowledge about these treatments during these treatment what are the problems that can happen and help them and if someone getting fever just after or few days after chemotherapy we have to act very quickly uh, sometimes their blood counts can go very uh, low i mean maybe the, the white blood cell count may be less than 1000 and if that cancer patient get a fever with that sort of low count in a background of that situation that is called an emergency that is called febrile neutropenia uh, so if you don't uh, treat this patient within 24 hours we are going to definitely lose this patient's life so that is why we need to identify these problems so people should get educated about the side effects of the treatment and what are the things that you should do during this treatment that is chemotherapy and there are newer treatments uh, like targeted therapies that is Uh, you get a target in the cancer cells where it is not seen in other cells so basically it's a product or product of genetic mutation or the genetic mutation so there are many medications pro, uh, pro, uh, uh, produce uh, against these targets now for example breast cancer uh, the target is her to new receptor in the cell surface so you pr- produce a uh, molecule against this target and this molecule will go and bind to this uh, target and uh, prevent them proliferating further so likewise there are targeted therapies um, so there are many targeted therapies uh, now uh, uh, introduced in the world so i- the next one is the immunotherapy now immunotherapy is it act via stimulating our body's immune system but those medicines are very expensive but still less side effects and uh, those uh, medication will act on the cancer patient by stimulating that particular person's immunity and there will be many more treatment options now they are experimenting especially in the developed world so one of my friends told me now they have invented a, a new uh, treatment method for leukemia especially for children uh, now we treat leukemias for about 3 years the total treatment duration but they treat within one month and they are getting a cure so those are new development but uh, it will be very 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 expensive uh, so those are actually uh, development new developments of the the uh, new scientific technology advancement so there's quite a little bit of advancement that has been going on around the rest of the world but yeah. there are financial difficulties yeah. as well so in the current context we have to make do with what we have yes. and uh, dr hal pull from the beginning of your answer just a little further uh, a while ago you mentioned that the youth have a role to play when caring for cancer patients now loved ones and relatives yeah. when someone gets cancer you don't immediately think Yeah, like you know how to care because you always uh, think about oh no like this person has cancer and they are very close to me i might lose them so yes. how do you get into a mindset where you can help care for your loved ones that have caught cancer yeah that is a very good question so there that, that is where we talk about palliative care so this is a new concept the modern palliative care so unfortunately in sri lanka uh, we we don't have uh, much knowledge about modern palliative care uh, but the palliative care means while a p- uh, patient is getting their disease directed treatment this is not only for cancer but many other diseases also but specifically when we are focusing cancer we, the moment we diagnose cancer 
we need to start palliative care for example now if someone is having a cancer now the doctor has to tell the patient that you are having a cancer so how are you going to tell this this is a very bad news for the patient so there is a technique for that so in palliative care you will teach now when say I am the doctor and patient is here now so I have to tell the patient that you are having a cancer the prognosis in the future you are going to have this type of uh, thing and this is uh, how your journey is going to be and if it is specifically bad still you have to tell so the youth or the family members has a bigger role at that place even um, now we don't usually tell this sort of bad news when the patient is alone so we ask them to bring their family members so the family members has to help in this situation and most important thing uh, from the youth or the family members is understanding the patient so I told you there are many side effects that can occur during treatment now if the family members can't understand this sometimes they do wrong things right for example while on treatment patient will get a severe loss of appetite so they can't eat their regular meals but what does the what do the relatives does they will try to forcefully feed these patients so that will cause severe problem for the patients so they need to understand these particular patient cannot eat during this period so we have to use a different technique for that they have to use small frequent meals and different types of uh, meals we have to use so one main complaint that patients are telling uh, giving us is can you please doctor can you please tell my uh, wife tell my husband tell my mother not to force me to eat during this period because I can't eat so when we do that they worship us so you can understand that much of mental agony these patients are undergoing the other problem is what uh, the family members uh, do a uh, wrong thing is they when the, the moment you are diagnose a cancer patient they try to keep him inside a room they will not allow the patient to go out they will not allow the patient to do any work that is another major fault happening in the society so we should not do that even the patient is a human being and he or she can do certain work he can they can help the housework and uh, then the patient will distract from their disease right so that is very important thing so what we advise is allow them to do whatever they can do uh, so they should be able to talk to others they should uh, discuss their problem with others they should not be in a room locked up so those are very important thing so uh, I talk about palliative care so palliative care is actually to improve the quality of life of the patient and the family so we consider when we treat a patient sometimes uh, even the uh, medical staff do a mistake that is we try to treat the disease that is wrong what we should do is we should treat the patient or the person so uh, the modern uh, uh, treatment methods when we are treating a patient we have to consider the family also so palliative care do a major role in that so we try to improve the quality of life of the patient plus the family when they are having a life threatening illness like cancer so we consider their physical problems we uh, this is patient plus the family and their psychological problems and their um, uh, spiritual problems because you might have heard about certain patients when they get cancer they are talking about i haven't done anything wrong why I got a cancer why me why not someone else so that sort of lot disturbances in their spirituality can happen so we need to help this so we have to train the people to help them so palliative care is for that symptom control make their quality um, and keep them as much as possible to the normal life maintaining their normal life so that is important now actually in Sri Lanka palliative care is developing little by little the best palliative care in the world you can get in UK that is in United Kingdom 95% of the palliative care needy patients are getting optimal palliative care in UK but in Sri Lanka 
maybe less than 12% of patients are getting this, even less than that. So, um, I mean, people think palliative care is for only dying patients. That is a myth. When you diagnose a patient with a life-limiting li uh, illness like cancer, we need to start palliative care at that moment. And maybe with uh, during the journey of the patient with the disease, sometimes you have to increase the palliative care intensity and sometimes the disease director treatment necessity may be less. And at one point, if you can't cure the patient, the total treatment or the caring methods will be palliative care. And even after the death of the patient, palliative care is not going to stop. Uh, during the bereavement period, you have to help the family. So palliative care should be there to help the family members. So, I mean, this is a big story actually, big uh, discussion. Uh, I can give you one example. Um, uh, many years ago, I got a patient, young patient, about 34 year old patient with a leukemia. Leukemic, uh, I mean, he had an acute myeloid leukemia. So, what this patient told uh, after telling, uh, disclosing the disease to the patient, uh, patient told me, I want to go home. Right? So, when, uh, when someone uh, do a lot of investigation and after finding the disease, uh, when someone told why you, want, why you want to go home, the doctor might get annoyed. But this particular patient had a reason to go home because his wife was pregnant, expecting and they, both of their parents were not helping them because they have married against their, their parents' wishes. So, this patient had to do a lot of work at home for the wife before he starts the treatment. So, likewise, we need to uh, consider a lot of factors. So, that is why palliative care should be there to treat this sort of disease conditions. And palliative care, apart from just palliative care, of course, there is, I mean, considering how uh, lacking palliative care is in Sri Lanka, there is a need for the youth as well to step up when there are people in your family. Like the example that you mentioned, uh, doctor, there is always a way that you can step up to help cancer patients and make their living experience a better one. Of course, through treatment or maybe, unfortunately, to uh, where it is incurable, obviously, uh, there is a lot to be done when it comes to cancer research, cancer care, cancer treatment and of course mental uh, stability yes. and palliative care as well that was a very insightful uh, discussion doctor unfortunately our time here stops today thank you very much for joining us on this discussion yeah. and that's all we have for you today at gen xyz if you miss this program you can catch the whole thing on our youtube channel youtube.com slash other there in english catch us again next time on another episode with new issues pertaining to the youth thank you for watching good night